Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Haram Ellis. I am, wanted to welcome you to this webinar. Uh, we're going to be discussing the uh, upcoming funding opportunities that we have uh, coming out this year. We are uh, very excited about this year, and we're very excited about uh, the things that we're going to be doing. We're doing things a little bit different this year and a little bit the same, and we'll talk about that um, extensively. I just wanted to go over just a few uh, kind of housekeeping things as we uh, begin this and so that we can have a productive conversation. I want to make sure that all of your questions get answered, and when we leave this call, we're all on the same page and working towards the same goal. So again, first of all, welcome. Um, just remember to mute your phone. Um, at this point, you are all in listen-only mode, but at a certain point, we will be opening up uh, the line for questions. You are welcome to submit your questions uh, via the question box uh, if you are online, or you can submit them audibly by raising your hand, and then uh, we will call on you. But if you're not talking, just make sure to uh, mute your phone so we don't have that background noise. Another piece is if you have to take a call, uh, please hang up and then redial into the webinar. Uh, some of our organizations that we work for have hold music. And while I do enjoy the sounds of smooth jazz, it might be a little bit distracting while we're trying to work through the rest of the webinar. Um, also, like I said, remember your questions. There will be an opportunity after the uh, training and technical assistance conversation and then again after the study group conversation uh, for us to answer questions throughout. Um, I just want to now kind of turn it over to uh, Ms. Valerie Leach, and she's been the driving force behind this. Uh, Valerie, welcome to the call. Thank you, Haram. Um, I thank all of you for joining us today, um, but most importantly, thank you for the work that you do every day with young people across the state of Ohio. I am excited that you're interested in joining us on our journey to advance youth ed programs across the state. Over the past several years now, um, we've been working really hard with other adult allies to really ground our youth-led work in evidence and to raise that public value for this work because we know how critical it is to meeting the needs of our young people today in schools and communities. Um, so I hope you find this uh, webinar very helpful. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out beyond this webinar. We're always happy to have conversations uh, about the work that you're doing and how we can support you here at the department. And with that, I will pass it over to Dr. Jessica Kalora. Thank you, Valerie. Um, and thank you to everyone who is on the line with us um, this afternoon. As Valerie mentioned, we have been working over the past several years um, with adult allies to advance the work of youth-led programs. For those of you who are new to some of this work, you'll hear us frequently throughout today's conversation use the term adult allies. And that is the term that we use um, that was kind of self-identified and selected by the adults who guide youth-led programs. Their preference was to be called adult allies. And Haram, if we can go to the next slide, we have some pictures and photos of the adult allies, um, just a handful of the adult allies who started this journey with us about four or five years ago with the goal of really looking at how can we unify the field of youth-led programs in Ohio around a common vision. Um, and I know we're fortunate today to have some of you on the call who also were part of these initial conversations. So we're really excited and honored that you could be on the webinar with us as well. Um, through these collective conversations with the adult allies, what we started to learn in here was a unifying vision of what youth-led programs in Ohio are. And this vision was initially aspirational. The adult allies came together and really talked about what they felt should be the goal for youth-led programs in Ohio. And the way that they defined that goal, you see displayed on your screen right now, they said that their goal was that young people would engage in a planning process to create and implement a strategic plan that uses evidence-based strategies 
to create community level change. What these initial adult allies also felt very strongly about was that we wanted to preserve the unique identity of every youth-led program in Ohio because we know there are different histories and contexts that they operate within. So as you can see on the next slide, what was really important was that the adults, while this was the common goal that was identified, it doesn't mean that youth-led programs don't continue to engage in a variety of other work. But what it does is ground it so that when we look at youth-led programs in Ohio, we're all working towards a shared vision while also kind of honoring the unique identity and local work that some of us may engage in. What was really important in addition to identifying a goal, um, we, the adult allies felt that this helped to kind of unify the field, but that people were still wanting more. And by that, what they wanted was a definition of youth-led programs. So again, we worked with the adult allies and they identified a definition for youth-led programs in Ohio that you see displayed on your screen now. What was very critical in this definition of youth-led programs is that the adult allies acknowledge that youth-led programs are community-based processes. This is one of the six CSAP strategies. So the adult allies were acknowledging that the work of a youth-led program, the existence of a youth-led program, when it is grounded in a certain evidence base, is a um, CSAP strategy. There are three core steps that young people engage in as part of this community-based process and part of their strategic planning process. The first is to determine a problem of practice. The second is to identify those root causes. And the third is to select and implement evidence-based strategies to address those root causes. Through this work as well, we were able to identify two evidence-based frameworks that guide both the vision and definition of youth-led programs. And you see those two frameworks described or displayed currently on your screen. One is the youth empowerment conceptual framework, and one is the strategic prevention framework. This background, the brief background that I just provided, is really critical in understanding the funding opportunities that are being released um, with through um, Prevention Action Alliance with the funding from the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Because both of the opportunities for this year are designed to further advance this vision and work of youth-led programs in Ohio. So the first training opportunity, the Training Academy, the primary purpose of the Training Academy is to ground and implement a youth-led program in accordance with those two evidence-based frameworks that were just displayed. So ultimately, it's about getting adult allies grounded in the evidence base so that they're prepared to implement their youth-led program in accordance with this vision that the adult allies define over the past several years. The Training Academy is a two-year opportunity, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in just a moment. This, um, the second opportunity, if we can just go back so I can talk about the second opportunity, um, is the study group. And the study group is really designed to deepen the theoretical knowledge of youth-led programs. Both of these funding opportunities ultimately serve the purpose of advancing the work of youth-led programs throughout the state of Ohio. Um, I am going to pause for just a minute, Haram, if that's okay, to see if there are just any questions from that very brief overview before we dive in a little bit deeper um, to getting into some of the specifics of what participants can anticipate with both of these funding opportunities. Sure. Um, if you do have a question, <clears throat> feel free to uh, raise your hand uh, via the webinar software and or you can put your question, if you would like to just type it, you can type it into the question box and we'll hold for a few, a uh, few moments just to allow people to have time to do that.
Um, all right, Jessica, I'm I'm seeing none. I think we're good to to move on, move on. Wonderful. Thank you, Hiram. So first, we're going to look a little bit in more detail about the training academies and technical assistance process. As I already mentioned, the training academy and technical assistance process is a two-year process. During the first year, the focus for the adult allies or those adults who are participating in the training academy is for them to ground their youth-led programs in those two evidence-based frameworks. During the second year of the training and technical assistance process, the core task for the adult allies is to engage their young people in the strategic planning process. So another way of thinking about this is that during the first year of the training academy is really a planning year where you as an adult are focusing on how you can prepare to implement the vision of youth-led programs with your young people. And in the second year is when you actually implement that plan. So the next slide kind of shows if we think of youth-led programs, we know that there's a key role that adults provide. That first year is really focused on the adult and allowing the adult ally the space and time that they need to think through how they are going to implement this vision of youth-led programs. What's unique about this learning opportunity um, and both this first and second year is that it's designed around a learning community format. What that means is that when you come to the training, you are learning with your peers and it's intentionally designed and facilitated in a manner that allows from cross learning. You'll receive content um, and, and information, but much of the learning will occur through the conversations that you have with your peers as we all kind of collectively grapple with how we want to implement our youth-led program. The technical assistance process is also a group process. Um, you are paired with other adult allies, so you get to learn and work with them during this first planning year. And that cross-learning and sharing continues into the second year. We've heard repeatedly from past participants that this is core to their learning experience because the value really is in those connections that you build with one another so that you can support each other on your youth-led journey. Those relationships become particularly valuable and important um, also during the second year. As you see, the second year focuses on young people implementing um, what the, the youth-led program and during that process we know that there are often implementation challenges or hurdles and it's a really valuable time to lean in to your learning community peers to help support each other as you move into that implementation phase. I wanted to kind of outline a couple things that you can expect during the training academies to make it clear kind of what it is and what it is not. Um, so first of all, what, what is provided during the training academies is a theoretical grounding for your youth-led programs. You use that theoretical grounding to translate it to practice so that you know how to implement your youth-led program in practice. It's not what isn't provided during the training academy is a training manual. And there's a specific reason for that. Um, Again, honoring the local control and the local aspect of each youth-led program, we found that it just doesn't work to provide a standard training manual, but instead what is provided is that theoretical grounding, again, which you translate into practice and make meaning for in your local context. Um, another thing that you can expect is really that opportunity, particularly that first year, to engage in a planning process. Um, the planning process and the training academy is focused specifically on the adults. We know that adult allies are critical to the successful implementation of a youth-led program. This is a space to kind of honor the importance of the adult ally and the work that we engage in with our young people. It is not a space for the young people themselves. We're fortunate that our partners at Prevention Action Alliance provide other opportunities for young people to participate directly in parts of the youth-led mo movement. 
specifically through the We Are the Majority rally. Um, in the past, they've been able to do youth-led summits. So there are other opportunities for your young people to engage. The training academy, though, is a specific space for the adult allies who do this work. And finally, as I alluded to, this is really an opportunity for you to determine how you're going to engage young people in a strategic planning process. Um, your young people will ultimately be developing the strategic plan during year two. Sometimes when we hear this term strategic plan, we think of our own organizational strategic plan. So we always like to be upfront and clear that it's not an opportunity for you to develop a strategic plan for your organization. It's an opportunity for you to learn how to engage young people in a strategic planning process, which they ultimately will develop and implement during the second year of the training academy. During the first year, as I referenced, it's focused on um, translating theory into practice. And I just wanted to kind of show you some of the documents or tools that you will develop that then become your guidance as you move into year two. So one of the first tools that you'll work on um, is we refer to it as an individual and group strategic plan map, but it kind of becomes your overarching theory of change for what you will do with your young people. Um, this becomes really important during the second year because it's a tool that you can refer back to and kind of identify what it is that you hoped to accomplish and track a little bit of how you're doing in accomplishing your stated objectives and goals for your youth-led program. The second document that you'll work on as part of the Training Academy and Technical Assistance process during the first year is a group narrative. This is your opportunity to tell the story of your youth-led program, and it becomes a very useful tool for sharing that story with your broader community. Um, we've heard other adult allies also tell us that it's a useful tool when funding opportunities become available because they've already written very concisely about the work of their youth-led programs. This ends up being a one-page document, two pages essentially, front and back, so it's very short and descriptive. And it shows how your youth-led program is grounded in the evidence of youth empowerment conceptual framework and the strategic prevention framework. So it's a very valuable tool that's developed as part of the process. And then the third and final tool that's developed is what we refer to as your personalized YECF model. So it is a combination of those first um, two tools that you saw and it gets displayed in a final poster format, again, highlighting and demonstrating that your youth-led program is grounded in an evidence base. The training and technical assistance process is intentionally designed so that you are working on these products during meetings and then during the technical assistance process. Um, so a lot of your time that you spend on these materials are part of the learning process. So don't feel like when you look at this that you're just gonna come to a first meeting and kind of think, be given tasks of completing these materials. It's all part of the learning that we do together and support each other with throughout the year. And then the second year, the key tool or document that is developed is that strategic plan map, and that is your youth-driven strategic plan map. That's your opportunity to use the tools that you developed during your first year at the training academy and actually put them into action. Um, and as a result of that action, your young people develop what you see displayed on your screen, which is that youth-driven strategic plan map. That is another brief overview of what you can anticipate. I'm going to turn it over to Hiram now for some of the nuts and bolts regarding the dates and eligibility requirements um, for the Training Academy and Technical Assistance process. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, so, <clears throat> if we're talking when we're talking about the Training Academy, um, there are uh, four dates. There are going to be four trainings. They're going to happen um, at, on the dates that you see here. Uh, one of them will be virtual. Um, these trainings will take place in Columbus, Ohio, at the uh, Dublin, uh, Ohio Integrated Educational Center. Um, they will last from 9.30 to 3.30 p.m., and lunch will be provided for these trainings. Um, when we think about who might be eligible, uh, we, we're looking for adults who work with young people who 
have a strong desire to to um, expand their knowledge, who want to just create change in their communities. Um, we do ask that for each organization that um, applies, that you do plan on bringing two individuals to each and every um, each and every session. It is it is incredibly important, and and we'd like it to be the same to individuals um it because we've just found over the years that having someone there to back you up to have those conversations to drop ideas off of is really really important uh to the process of the learning that we want to do um when we talk about deliverables um the deliverables are stated in the rfp but they're also reiterated here uh we there there will be pre-work there will be slight amount of homework it is it is important that when we come into those places that it is done and your quarterly um your quarterly disbursement depends on you having completed that work um there are a number of different events that happen throughout the year that uh you are required by uh by the grant to to attend for one is the um, adult ally summits will, will be happening in December. Um, in addition, it is the bringing your students to the We Are the Majority rally in uh, May and also attending the Ohio Prevention Conference in uh, June. Those are just a number of a couple of the events that um, that's, that that we'll be expecting to see you at. In addition to in addition to completing the pre work and attending the training academies, whether they be virtual or in person. And when we think about, hey, I, I think I want to um, I want to attend, what are some of the things I need to kind of think about? We've created kind of a checklist for you. We want to have two adults committed to serve as adult allies for the youth. Uh, we want to have reviewed the scope of work and year one calendar to ensure that we can be there as much as possible. Uh, we wanna have sign off and support from our organization, from our uh, fiscal agent, from our manager, because there will be some time missed of work while you're traveling back and forth to Columbus. Um, we have completed the application and budget narrative, reviewed and signed the prospective grant agreement, and are excited to empower young people in your community and provide leadership to prevention. If you can check off all of those boxes, then we definitely want to see your application and we definitely want you to apply for this. The next piece what I'd like to do now is just kind of open it up for any questions. Um, again, if you have a question, you can submit it to me via uh, the text box. Uh, you can submit it to me via the, uh, you can just raise your hand and I will uh, unmute your line and you can um, ask the question. Okay, um, we do have one question. One, the question is from uh, Amanda Hampton. <clears throat> Amanda asks, instead of two people for an organization, can there be a partnership uh, within a region? Um, they share an MHRB. Yeah, we've seen that um, occur in the past, Amanda. This is Jessica. Thanks for asking that question. Um, really, it's two adult allies. As long as it's the two adult allies who support the youth-led program, um, we know that sometimes youth-led programs are run um, as a collaboration between two agencies within a community, um, be it at the city or county level. So as long as those two partners are the ones who are responsible for facilitating um, the youth-led program, then we've absolutely had cross-collaborations like that occur before. Thank you, Jessica. Are there any other questions? I don't have, I don't see any currently, but are there any other questions that are out there before we move on? All right, seeing none, we will move on to um, our next funding opportunity. And if you and if you do think of a question, don't worry, um, you, we can come back to it at the end 
if you're interested in talking a little bit more about sending a technical assistance, we can actually come back to that. So don't don't worry if you if 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 you, you you're not missing out on your opportunity, but we are gonna uh, just move on. And I'm turning it back over to uh, Jessica. Thanks, Haram. Um, so the second funding opportunity this year is for what we refer to as the study group. And there are two primary goals for the study group. The first is that the adult allies who participate in this study group um, are really focused on developing their own personal knowledge of the foundations of youth-led programs. We often refer to that as kind of the theoretical foundations of youth-led programs. So these are adults who are really interested in deepening their knowledge um, around the literature base that supports youth-led programs. And we always say that in addition to that first goal, the adult allies who participate in the study group also have a responsibility and that responsibility is that we're not just deepening our knowledge for ourselves, we're also doing it so that we can advance the vision of youth-led programs throughout the state. So it's also about making a contribution um, and making sure that we are disseminating the knowledge and information that we are developing and learning about to the broader public. So the way that that information gets disseminated is through the development of two final products in particular. Um, one is a white paper and the other is a workshop. Some of you on the call today I know have been past participants in the study group, so that's exciting to have you on the line today. Um, others of you may have had an opportunity to engage in some of the workshops that were developed as a result of participating in the study group last year. Um, those workshops are always highlighted and are presented at OPEC, but the adult allies who engage in this learning opportunity also have an opportunity even after the funding opportunity um, to continue to deliver the workshops that they developed as requested by communities and counties. So you really become an ongoing resource for the field by participating in this opportunity. Um, I did want to highlight, since we emphasized that the training and technical assistance process, that is when you sign up for it, you are signing up for a two-year funding opportunity. So you're committing to both years. The study group is a one-year funding opportunity. So you are committing to that one year, which really ends up being about nine months because it typically our first meeting begins in September and the culminating event really is at OPEC, which is late June. So those are the two primary purposes for the study group and similar to the overview that I provided with the training academy, we wanted to provide a quick overview with the study group um, about what you can expect from participating in this to get a sense of kind of what it is and what it isn't. Um, the study group is really unique, um, as is the training academy, because it's an opportunity to engage in professional development. But in the case of the study group, you're engaging in professional development really as thought leaders and writers. Um, it isn't just professional development without any sort of ongoing support or guidance. Um, I don't know if I even mentioned this when I first started talking at the beginning of the webinar, um, but I uh, work at Ohio University as a research associate, and we have a team here um, that supports both the training academy and the study group. So we're the primary facilitators for these two learning opportunities. And we're the ones who provide then that ongoing support to you um, in between the meetings, whether that's the training academy meetings or the study group meetings. Um, that translates really nicely into the next point, which is what this is in the study group is an opportunity to learn both during and outside of the regularly scheduled meetings. So with the study group, you aren't only committing to being an active participant during the study group meetings, you are also committing to being an active learner outside of that setting. So you'll have opportunities to read um, literature outside of the study group meetings in preparation for our in-person meetings. And then as the year progresses, you'll also have opportunities to work outside of the study group time to develop your white papers and your workshops. Um, both of these to the next point, 
These products also are collaboratively developed with other adult allies. If you choose to participate or apply to participate in the study group, please know that you don't go through the writing process alone and you don't develop your workshop by yourself. You will be partnered with one or two other adult allies in order to develop these materials and resources. And we are always learning from our past experiences um, and identifying effective ways to really partner adult allies so that they can work well together and collaboratively on these products and documents. Um, I wanted to show, just like we did with the Training Academy, just some brief examples of what I mean when I'm referring to a white paper and what I mean when I'm referring to a workshop. So on this next slide, you'll see um, this will be the third time that we've had uh, the privilege of offering the study group. So the first time we offered the study group, we had four white papers and workshops that were developed and delivered as a result of that of those adult allies and their efforts. Um, this past year, we had five white papers and workshops that were developed. So what you see on your screen here is just an example of one of the white papers. Um, you don't have to worry about the format or anything like that. You go through work in a Word document collaboratively with your peers with support from our team. Um, and then once you consider your white paper final, it's passed along to a graphic designer who then formats it um, and makes it look very professional as you can see on your screen. If you are interested in seeing other examples of the white papers, you'll notice a URL address at the bottom of the screen. I encourage you to go to that URL address to see more examples of the white papers and equally important, um, just to look at those white papers and utilize them as resources for yourselves because that's ultimately the purpose of why these materials are developed. On the second um, slide, you'll see just an example of a workshop. Obviously, the workshop is ultimately something that is implemented in person, um, but we just wanted to provide you an example of a tool that you use um, in order to prepare for the delivery of your workshop. What this gets referred to is a, as a planning template. Um, so you'll utilize this template, that's the standard format that we use, in order to document your ideas and plans for your workshop that again ultimately gets delivered um, at the OPEC conference at the end of June. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Haram to provide some of the logistical details and overview for interested study group participants. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, so, as, as she said, we, we generally get started about September, early September, and we'll, there'll be no exception this time. Um, we'll get started around September 5th with a virtual meeting. Um, our virtual meetings are uh, through software such as what we're using today. Um, we also, you know, sometimes we would like to provide like visual video meetings, and so what we found is that um, our auditors are okay with um, web with webcams being purchased with grant funds. And so if you don't have a webcam, if you don't have that capacity, it's perfectly okay to use these unrestricted funds uh, to be able to purchase that. Um, but as you can see, our um, schedule is as follows. Uh, we'll be September and then again in October. Um, at, at these meetings, we are, like Jessica said, reading through material. We are beginning to kind of understand what, what is it that we want to bring to the field. And then we begin working on that and crafting our papers and crafting our workshops, uh, being prepared to deliver those um, at, the end of the, at the end of the fiscal year uh, at OPEC. Um, our meetings, once again, are centralized in the Columbus area. Um, the in-person meetings are from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, here in Columbus, and then the virtual meetings um, are from 3 to 4.30. Um, so when we talk about the type of people who are eligible for this, um, this is a really unique opportunity. And so uh, we're, we're, we're looking at people eligible for this um, who have engaged in some of our uh, opportunities in the past. We would not want individuals who have engaged in maybe one part and not the other, um, this is the first year that we're offering the uh, trading and technical assistance uh, in a two-year package. In the past, we've kind of done it one year and then 
uh, moved into the next one. So anyone who has completed uh, the training and technical assistance uh, process, uh, we will also be giving uh, special consideration to regional learning collaborative leaders. Um, and then we also want people who have not engaged with us at all. So from the, the broader behavioral health and prevention field who are interested in learning more about the theories that inform a youth-led program. So if that, if either of those speaks to you or, 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 uh, or touches you in any way, then I think that uh, you should definitely apply for this. Um, and once again, we say all individuals must be interested in advancing the field of youth-led programs by contributing to the development and creation of products and resources for the broader field, including white papers and workshops. <clears throat> so um, who should attend? Again, in, individuals interested in advancing the field of youth-led programs by contributing to the development of products and resources for the broader field. Um, like with the training and technical assistance, um, we have to uh, disperse this grant in a uh, quarterly fashion. And so um, each, quarterly there, each quarter there is deliverable. There are deliverables. Um, you definitely want to complete the pre-work uh, for the meeting and attend the virtual meeting. Uh, you will have a 10 Adult Allies Summit. Much of the same thing with the training and technical assistance we would expect to see you at the We Are the Majority Rally and also attend the Ohio Prevention Conference. Um, so for both funding opportunities, uh, grant funds will be released quarterly upon completion of deliverables. Uh, disbursements will take place in September, December, March, and June. Uh, the permissible use of funds are for salaries, <clears throat> substitute teacher coverage, lodging, travel per diem, uh, registration fees, equipment, including webcam. Um, there's just, there, there, are all, there are a number of different things that you can use, this for, use them for. Please be creative and, 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 and provoking in your budget. And if there's questions, we'll come back to you. But uh, we, definitely, we definitely want you to apply. Uh, up next, what we have is a kind of a special treat. Uh, one of our regional learning collaborative leaders um, has joined us um, to talk about his personal experience with both of the funding opportunities in the past. And so um, I'm just going to turn this over to him, uh, Sean. And at this time, Sean, feel free to take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you, Haram, and good afternoon, all. Uh, so uh, as Haram showed, uh, or as Haram kind of talked about um, with both of these opportunities, I'll say like, my organization, I'm in Cincinnati, is called Youth at the Center. We've done a lot with young people. We've not necessarily done a lot with um, prevention. So we were newer to prevention, but like the idea of youth-led programs. And I think by participating, I will, I'll just acknowledge at the beginning, there was some moments where I felt like, like I needed a glossary of like all the different terms and acronyms being thrown around at times but it started to really click and as the process went through and it started to really make connections and i think one of the things since um this year like is when we completed our strategic plan map is every time i have written uh, a grant i have been able to like utilize information from the strategic plan map and it just makes it so much easier to write um proposals and just kind of lay out what it is we want to do and how it is we know we're being effective in engaging our young people. Um, so that's been um, one thing that I would say like this process has really helped. Uh, so, um, so if you are doing the training and technical assistance program, um, it's okay if it doesn't all feel like it makes sense at the beginning, because I think um, Jessica and her team do a really great job about helping you along in the process to feel like you get a grasp of it and, and can really start to think about how you um, can put it into practice effectively. Uh, and then for the study group, um, I think this year with the study group, one of the neat things of being able to participate in the study group was we looked at some articles and research happening around uh, the field of youth-led prevention and youth-led programs. And then we 
got a chance to say like what is it we feel like is missing or not maybe as robust or dynamic as it could be in um you know in what's out there around engaging young people and and then get a chance to actually develop papers develop presentations workshops uh and and add that so as opposed to just lamenting the fact that it doesn't exist uh, i think we got a chance to actually think about how can we you know identify a gap and then actually respond to make sure that young people and those who are working with young people are better supported uh in our work so those were two key things and the other thing i will just endorse is that harem uh does a great job of keeping us fed uh, and giving us good food and uh, treats as we go through that helps uh, measurably just be able to kind of stay engaged in, in that process. So those are a few of the things I'll just highlight that I think took away uh, and really appreciate about the opportunity. And I think the, the networking experiences are great as Haram talked about. You get to go to the Adult Allies Summit in December uh, and the OPEC conference. Uh, and there's some really great workshops and engagement things uh, by being part of this that the funds kind of help ensure that these professional development opportunities continue for us so that we're continuing um, to grow and learn in our practice. Cool. So I'll turn it back to Haram or see if there's any questions that people maybe have. Yeah, thank, thank you, Sean. I uh, really appreciate that. What we want to do is first remind everyone that. The deadline to apply is Friday, August 16th. Uh, again, the deadline to apply is Friday, August 16th at 5 p.m. Uh, this uh, needs to be submitted via the SurveyMonkey link that's available on our website, that's available in the RFP. Um, please, please, please ensure that we do have that. We have that link by 5 p.m. Also, it, we encourage you to go through and just kind of look at the uh, RFP. It has all of the questions and information that you'll need to input into the online uh, system or portal. Um, I do not believe that you get the opportunity to save it and come back to it. So it's important to have everything ready when you sit down to input that and to do and to sit down before 5 p.m on August 16th. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is open up for any and all questions. Um, we would be happy to, I'd be happy to answer any questions on logistics and administration of this grant, on the uh, application process. Um, Jessica can answer any questions on content and Sean can answer any personal experience questions that um, anyone might have at this point. Um, so I'm just gonna gonna open it up, and if you have a question, like I said, hit that question button, um, hit that raise your hand button. I will come to you, or you can feel free to enter that into the question box, and I'll read that question aloud, and uh, so that everyone can hear it and answer that uh, as quick as as well as possible. Any questions at all? Questions at this point? Any Karen, questions? I have one comment as people are, this is Jessica, I just have one comment as people are maybe um, thinking about or composing questions that they may have about these funding opportunities. Um, sure. One thing I wanted to stress too is with the training academy that it really is designed for people of all experience levels. Um, if you have an existing youth-led program, um, this is still an opportunity for you to participate um, and really document the work of your youth-led program as it aligns with that vision of youth-led programs. Um, if you are new to the field of prevention or to youth-led, um, this is also an opportunity for you to really take a year to kind of think through um, and plan how you would like to implement your program. Um, the opportunity is also available for um, individuals who may be from organizations who have participated in the past but have experienced organizational turnover. Um, so if your organization or representatives from your organization have engaged previously but you have new staff, 
um, you can absolutely still apply with those new staff members to engage in this opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jessica. Uh, we did get one question in. Um, the question was from Sarah, and it says, what is the average funding amount per study group participant? Um, the funding amount is $2,000 uh, for the 10-month period. Um, so when you would uh, apply, you can apply for up to $2,000 uh, per individual. And uh, the training academy is $4,000 over two years. And so that would be the same, the $2,000 um, each year. Are there any additional questions? I only saw one come through. Any any additional anything? Questions, comments, concerns, rude remarks. Any at all? <laughs> or even any any other comments from uh, past participants? Because I know. But Haram, the list that you shared with us prior to this webinar, we have some others on the line who also participated um, in one or both of these learning opportunities. Absolutely, absolutely. I am going to go to Beth Dixon. Beth, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. I just wanted to say that I, I'm a past participant in the study group, and I thought it was wonderful. And so if there is anyone listening and thinking about that opportunity, I highly recommend it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Are there any additional questions, any additional comments? Well, listen, we just want to thank everyone for their time and attention. Um, we look forward to, um, if you decide to um, be a part of this process with us, we look forward to growing with you. Um, if you are interested in <clears throat> getting into contact with us about any questions or anything like that that come up afterwards, uh, please feel free. This, uh, we this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our uh, web page. So if you feel like you missed something or you want someone else to see this who may not be here currently, uh, please feel free to have them um, check into that. I think we, we're going to get it up as quickly as we can, um, either a link to it on YouTube or the actual video on our website, and then we should probably have that up by tomorrow. Please remember that um, the 9th, is the deadline for questions and so if you have additional questions um, please please get those into us as quickly as possible um, once again my name is Hannah Mellis and I just want to thank you all for your time and attention thanks